Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. Well, a good morning to you. I hope all is well with you and your family. And uh, you're enjoying this. Um, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think of what we're going through right now, this quarantine. I, I think of when I was a kid. All the things that I, didn't, that I didn't get caught at, the things that I didn't get punished for. Yeah, now I'm grounded. <laughs> They're catching up to me now. So think of it that way. All the stuff that you got away with when you were a kid that your parents didn't catch on to you for, that you didn't get grounded for. Yeah, they're catching up to you today. <laughs> oh, good morning to you. It is a Fishing in Florida show. I am your host, Risk All Light. Listen, we have to have a little bit of uh, a bit of, of humor. Otherwise, we just might go insane. This morning, I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. If you want to uh, if you want to protect what you love to the max, you need to talk to my friend Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Good morning, Carolyn. Well, good morning, Risk All on this gorgeous Sunday. You know, you said something to me right, which I thought was absolutely appropriate. I'm glad that it's cloudy today. <laughs> you know, I have been, uh, as you know, it's difficult to get out fishing. Uh, we're not really supposed to get out on the water and stay away from people. So uh, sanding and uh, finishing 17 pieces of teak furniture has been my project the last four days. My goodness. And I'll tell you, it's pretty tedious down to uh, putting sandpaper around a toothbrush and getting to all those flats. I'm, I'm a little burned out. So oh, my. I couldn't wait to look out the window today. <laughs> Wow. Well, um, I, I hope you have pictures for us. I have amazing before and after, and uh, we had made the mistake of putting varnish on the teak furniture, which then over the years has flaked off. Mm. So we had to hand sand everything down to bare wood. So uh, any listeners out there, please don't put uh, varnish or shellac on your teak furniture. Uh, oil and oil. cleaner is all yep. you really need. Yep. Oil is, is the only thing I ever used on it. I, ne I never really thought about it because it's so pretty all by itself. You don't really need that to add that uh adding the shellac and stuff just brings out more of the 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 uh, grain in the in the wood and stuff but um it's pretty just the way it is you add the oil it's almost the same thing and you don't have to worry about it flaking off so uh Absolutely. did you sneak out did you get out there and do any fishing no, I didn't, but uh, all of my friends from the Offshore Angler Pompano Beach Club have been sending me photos during the week, and uh, some of them went out yesterday. They were able to pick up some blackfin tuna. Oh uh, I know there's some wahoo. Carol Strickland went out and uh, had a really exciting day the other day. She actually put a 90-year-old woman on her very first sailfish. That was her, that lady's bucket list, and she oh was my. able to, to catch one and take some photos with it. Uh, so I'll have to share those on the uh, Facebook page yeah. for all of our listeners. Uh, but yeah. that was a very, very exciting day for her. Wow. That's cool. That is cool. Yeah, I, that, I'm sure that uh, is going to be very, very interesting to see. Cool. Yeah, please put those on the uh, Facebook page. If you go to Facebook, you'll find us there, Fishing in Florida Show. A couple of different ways that you can listen to us. I, um, I'm very close to getting the application completed. Uh, so we will have an app available uh, that you will allow you, let's try that in English. I'm still waking up, you guys. We will have a, an app available that will allow you to listen to the network, So, and we're on the network, so uh, it will be an app that has no um, no commercials, no push notifications, none of that stuff. It's just a very simple, straightforward app. You download, and you hit play, and you can listen to whatever happens to be playing on our network at that time. Um, I think we're about a week and a half away. I'm supposed to get a sample of it this next week and test it and make sure it works okay. And then um, I don't know how long it's going to take to get it in the stores, but it'll be the easiest of all ways to listen to the show. You just download the app, you hit play, and uh, you'll be able to listen to the show. Uh, in the meantime, there's a couple of different ways that you can listen to the show right now. Uh, for anybody who has uh, unlimited calling, you can actually call in to listen I don't know a whole lot of people that offer that, but you won't be in on the on the uh, switchboard. You won't be up on the uh, the host board, but uh, you will be able to listen at 
Uh, or you can go to our, our home network, which is www.wcetfm.com. And we have a player there that you can click on and, and uh, listen to us there. Or you can go to Facebook and click on Contact Us, and that gets you on the live server. A big thank you to WCET. A big thank you to High Point Radio. A big thank you to KYAH. A big thank you to Marina Rock Radio. Those are all of our affiliates that carry the show as well. Uh, WCET is 101.7 <clears throat> out of Columbia. High Point is 1690 a.m. out of New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. KYAH is 540 a.m. out of uh, Utah. Big, big thank you to all you guys. Couldn't do it without you. Greatly appreciate it. So uh, w- there is some fishing action going on, but uh, you're going to have to be one of the fortunate few that is able to get out there because the marinas are typically are closed. All the parks are closed here in Palm Beach County and, and the other counties, as far as I know. Uh, up and down, up and down the state. So you'll have to uh, find another way. If you want to get out, you'll have to find another way to do that. Uh, otherwise, you can just do something real simple, like go out for a walk and and uh, enjoy what we have. At least it's not raining. It's overcast. Kind of keeps the air conditioner from having to work hard. It kind of cools things down for us a little bit. So you can go for a walk, go for a bike ride. There's things that you can do outside. I my neighbors outside uh, outside my neighbors uh, across from me. Uh, decide to just put up a couple of lawn chairs and just enjoy the sunshine and enjoy, uh, you know, watching people walking by. I've never seen, I don't know if this is true at, uh, happening at your place, but I've never seen so many people walking. You know, uh, that's really interesting. It's, it's almost a little bit eerie. Any time of the day you go out, and I typically go for a walk around 7.30 at night, there are kids out, there are adults out, there are bicycles out, uh, yeah. skateboards, things I've not seen for quite some time. and. <laughs> And I'm out, actually out walking Ralphie, and uh, I'm doing a little walk, and all of my miles go to benefit the uh, Florida Humane Society. So oh, that's cool. kind of good. So uh, and the more I get out and walk, the more uh, money and dog food and things that they uh, that they get over there delivered. So well, I have uh, to find out about that because I walk every day, and uh, the first thing that we do when I get up <coughs> is um, my Bow Wow and I go out for a walk, and typically it's three to four miles, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I I can help add to that. That would be great. Um, oh, and, absolutely! I'll share that with you. Yeah, and we we did it this morning, but we didn't do uh, the long walk. Cause Sunday's the only day we walk <laughs> every day, every day, seven days a week. Um, but Sunday's the only day that we walk short uh, because of the show. So we only did like a twenty minute walk. Um, so I went out there and came back. So yeah, I'd, I could I could help with that. Um, that would be great because I'm doing it anyway. And so and it would be like icing on the cake, so to speak. Sure, I'll be happy to share. And I had the same thought process. I'm walking anyway, so I might as well help. Yeah. Yep, and, and so I'm a regular walker in the neighborhood, and typically I, I see few people. But it, within the last couple of weeks, that, that picture has completely changed. Um, anyway, I, I see we have Robert. Good morning, Robert. How are you, my friend? Good morning, all. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. How's everybody? Well, we're, we're, um, I was telling the listeners earlier, all the things that I, I'm just looking at it this way, what we're going through, all the things that I got away with as a kid that I never got grounded for, they're all catching up to me now. Yep, that's it. You're all grounded. You all got grounded. <laughs> you can't go to the all park. The same time. You, you can't go to the park. You can't go fishing. You can't go, you can't go to the movies. You can't go to the restaurant. You're grounded, baby. Well, you and and you know, I have to... I have to share with you, I saw a really funny video. Someone um, did a makeshift boat uh, launch. They actually backed their boat down a beach, um, of course, and with their truck and got stuck into the <laughs> sand trying to launch it. And then, of course, the law uh, force <laughs> came over and <laughs> told them that was a no-no and had to get a big, uh, huge tow truck to get them out of there. But they were uh, points for creativity. Hmm. Yeah, that was that was actually up here and. uh there was somebody from Port St. Lucie who has all of their ramps closed, came to the last remaining Martin County place they could find and tried to launch from the beach. That didn't work out too well. <laughs> we also had one who launched his F-250 instead of his boat the other day after he moved the sign oh. so that he could get into the boat ramp. Lord have mercy. I will tell you uh, some, of, some of the most hysterical, I mean, it's sad in a way, but it is funny. Um, some of the most hysterical things I've ever seen are at boat ramps. Um, one of the most notorious ones is a John Pennycap. I don't know if it's still the same as it is, but there's a, there's a park down in the Keys. It's called John Pennycap and they have boat ramps there and they are some of the, the highest angle boat ramps I've ever seen. 
and uh, <clears throat> I never put out there. I, but I, my dad, like I told you, as a family, we go fishing. This was one of the places we go. We go to John Penny Camp and go fishing. <clears throat> I watched a guy in a it, what appeared to look like a brand new white BMW um, dropping off a little whaler. <clears throat> I think it's about sixteen foot whaler or so. And uh, the BMW must have been a uh, manual transmission. Um, he, he backed he backed down to the to the uh, ramp. Uh, I guess he put the parking brake on, and it was enough to stop it at that point. But it wasn't really strong enough to, if any movement happened, to st- to continue stopping it. So the short of the story is, this guy's in his boat, undoing the latches, and all of a sudden, the thing starts rolling backwards very slowly, and he sees it. If he jumps off the boat, he tries to grab it. It's too late. It's the the, the, the angle was so strong, the, everything went in the water. Everything. Uh, I felt bad for the guy later, but it was funny to watch it, it to just scrambling, trying to get this thing to uh, to not do what it was doing. Yeah, if you need oh, and I've seen, I've seen him just go to a boat ramp. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Carolyn. Well, well, even with certainty here, I was doing a few errands, and uh, you know, even errands a little bit different now that they they say that you should wear any kind of cloth <clears throat> over your face. So everybody, every time I go into Publix, I feel like I'm robbing the place with a bandana, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But, uh, so does everybody but the, else. So. <laughs> right. And you know what's funny? Uh, You're playing the, hey, do, do I know that person behind the mask game, which is kind of funny because people wearing baseball hats and masks, which just think you never could do that before. So it's a license to go out and feel like you're kind of a bad guy. <laughs> so. this, this, is, this, is, uh, this is what I feel like. This is what I feel like my life is turning into. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but there's oh. no fishing going on. Yeah. So, so tell me about it. I sent, you a, I sent you a couple of pictures yesterday. I, I, we're getting ready to add some more pages to the reader's feature section. Those are just some of the pictures that people sent me. But mm-hmm. there's a lot of families out fishing together. Uh, yes, I, I saw that. That was very Oski. heartwarming. Very heartwarming. Yeah, the yep. Oski family caught out, went out and got a couple of tarpon and some stuff and over in Boca Grande, and that other picture I sent you was Sarah Shipley from Jupiter. Right. Yep. Uh, caught a couple of giant barracudas. I don't know what the hell they were going to do with those. <laughs> you can eat uh, those, right? No, you can. I can't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> I don't even let somebody put a barracuda on my plate. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, they're but edible. The Maybe maybe smelling fish in the ocean, and they do not even get into my boat. So. I had heard when I was younger that it was dangerous to eat them. Some kind of, they carried something or something, I don't know. Some very long, many years ago, I heard it was dangerous yes, to eat they bacon. Do. They carry something that's poisonous or something? Yeah. Some kind of poison. Um, it gets into your system, and it doesn't it, come back out. It stays in. or whatever, however you pronounce that. Yeah. yeah. Um. But anyway, yes, fishing is going on. There was people out in Yankee Town and Crystal River. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got a, a message from uh, John King, who was out in Yankee Town. He said all of the ramps were closed, and he could not believe how many boats were out. He said everybody's keeping their distance. He said, but I did not expect to see this many boats out here today. Well, how many? Said, if the ramps are closed, how, how are they getting out? Well, the, the, no, no, private ramps are still open. Only yeah, public ramps are closed. Oh, so so whoever's out there's probably got a private ramp. So anybody who has a neighborhood like my neighborhood has two boat ramps in it. Oh, so you know if you've got a friend who lives in here, <laughs> you cool. Can get a key to the boat ramp. <clears throat> Well, I mean, you know, we... As a matter we... of fact, I went past the the boat ramp that's nearest to my house. I went by there last night, and the there was trucks everywhere. So a bunch of people must have used that one, so... Well, I, I have to tell you, there's a, there's a company called EarthCam, and they do some really good live cams on a lot of the beaches. And to kind of feel like I'm going out, I'm, I'm looking right now at hillsboroughlighthouse.org, the inlet cam. And there are probably it's it's live time. There are probably center consoles going out every every two or three minutes. I'm watching them go out the inlet. It looks like it's flat calm. Oh wow! But uh, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people are still still heading out. If you're lucky enough to either borrow a dock, have a dock. Uh, here goes another boat right now. I'm looking at another one, and that was uh, just when I mentioned it. That's what, what less than a minute. So they're still going wow. out. Lucky yeah, guys. A, uh, if you want to watch those, there's one on Jupiter Inlet too. There's a. Uh a lot of those but um yeah there's people still out there fishing there they're actually uh two conch charters down in marathon is is fishing every day 
Uh, he sent in a picture of a pair of really nice mahi. It looks like they're 40 pounds range uh, mahi. Oh, my. He caught yesterday, and uh, yellowtail bite's been good. He said mutton snapper bite's been good. It's all good. It's just can't get enough customers. But uh, Well, he's he um, down a marathon. They're not letting anybody out down there. Well, you can't go down there. You have to live in the Keys. But yeah. if you live in the Keys, you can still go fishing. Uh, yeah. So he's got customers, apparently, that live in the Keys. And they went out. But, uh, yeah, they're fishing. Lucky, lucky. Those are those are really, really good guys. And as a matter of fact, they have uh, on their entire fleet, they've got our Atlas tracks, trackers just to, for safety. Uh, they use the replays to go back and look at some fishing spots and, and how much hours they've put on the boat. So we're kind of excited we see them catch. We uh, we, we really appreciate what they, what they do. They're great fishermen. Yeah, they are, and I've known Jack Carlson forever. So he's a great guy. He's the guy in charge of all of that. But, uh, yeah, they're a great family. They, they run uh, – now he's got about 16 boats. When I first met him, it was just him and his boat. But uh, – <laughs> he runs about 16 boats now all over the state hmm. and uh, does a great job. But, yeah, everybody's – there's people out fishing, and the fish are being caught. And it's just uh, whether you can get out or not. So, Yeah, well, there is a lot of bridges and stuff. That if, I mean, if you want to go fishing, you, there's always options like that. You can go fishing under the bridges. There's canals that we can go fishing in. may not be able to get your boat out there, but there's other ways to go fishing as well. It's well, nice when you got the boat. tiny little park in my neighborhood where I can go. I went out and caught a couple of snook the other night. One was too long, one was too short, but, you know, at least something to do. So That's uh, part of the sad part of what we're going through is, you know, they there's no school, so the kids are at home. The parents are about to go insane, and then they close the parks down. And, uh, you know, I understand the social distancing thing, but, you know, when you're at a park, you're, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, it is what it is. We have to deal with it. Uh, and best the best way that we can. So, but there's other things we can do. I, I know that uh, your one of your favorite things is to go bike riding. You, know, you can go bike riding. Go I can car. still do that. Yeah. So. They, they haven't uh, but, stopped. Yeah, it's funny. Them. I saw a, a funny thing the other day. Somebody said that you know some of these states still haven't gone to uh, mandate the you know stay at home stuff. Mm-hmm. And it said having some states do it and have some states not do it is like having a peeing section in your pool. <laughs> oh, <my>. oh gee <laughs> and i think there's only about six that haven't done it yet mm. yeah well <clears throat> my goodness well you know one i try to look at the silver lining of what's going on one good thing that the thing that i the reason i do this show is uh to help give families an option of something to do well Right now, that particular option may not be as available as it normally would be, but the one option that you do have is that you are with each other and that uh, you should enjoy this as best as you can. I know it's for a lot of people it's scary, and they're really concerned about what's going on. It, it is scary in the sense that it's really not in our control, per se. But uh, have faith that things will work out, <clears throat> that things will will. will we'll, we will get back to some degree of normalcy. I, I'm having... Uh, you know, when you're addicted to something, what do they call that? And you, when you, when you, I can't think of the word. Um, gosh, it's 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 eluding me. But I, I'm I'm having convulsions. I want to go fishing. <laughs> it's been almost going on three weeks now. Uh, so um, hopefully we'll get back well, to a point where. I do hope that people take this time to reflect on their lives and. Amen. Yeah. Some other things, and maybe that when we reboot, they take a little different attitude towards each other. Yeah. Um, a little different attitude towards the world and the way it works, and you know, just take a little different look at everything. Hopefully, it'll do that, and people don't just sit and get pissed off that it's happening. So that's not going to help. Hopefully, they take know? a yeah. Yeah, it doesn't help, and yeah. it, and it won't help you in the future. But, uh, hopefully, people take a little look at at life and how life works, and how life and how important it is, and Maybe that your neighbors aren't as bad as you thought, and maybe you know, the other people that you thought were were bad aren't, and you know. Yeah, yeah. My, my my neighbor, one neighbor, has put put up a couple of lawn chairs, just sat out in the front yard, just kind of watching what's going on, watching people walking back and forth. I was telling Carolyn, uh, I have, I don't think I've ever seen more people out on the street 
than I have here in the last couple of weeks. I'm physically out on the street, walking, jogging with their dog, whatever, with their uh, partner, or whether that's a husband or wife, whatever that might be. Um, but I've never seen so many people out on the street uh, just kind of enjoying enjoying what we have, you know. I, yeah. it, it, the one thing that I would like to share with people what I'm think, while I'm thinking about it is I have several friends of mine who are doctors, and all of them agree that stress is the root of all disease. Stress is the root. So if you're at home and you're all stressed out and you're, you're in fear or, or you're like some of these people are literally in panic, you're making yourself more susceptible to getting sick. So just think about that before you go down that road. The, the better that you are emotionally, the stronger that your immune system is. The stronger that your immune system is, the more that you can resist this virus that is going around. Um, anyway, yep. I'll leave it at that. Robert, I appreciate you taking time to call in, my friend. I know that uh, we're very restricted on to what we can do. Have you got any idea what you're going to be coming up with this next week? Uh, no, probably some bike riding and uh, sneaking out at night to do a little snook fishing and Working on the magazine, if anybody's got any pictures, just send them to me at pages at flfishmag.com, and we'll put them in the reader's feature section. We've left that section open on the magazine. This is the magazine with Carolyn on the cover, and we've left the uh, reader's features open. I'm going to add some more pictures Monday. I added some more last week, and we're just going to keep adding pictures to the reader's feature section until the next issue comes out. Cool, and that's one of the nice things about having a digital magazine that you're not locked in per se. Once it's printed, it's kind of difficult to go back and reprint and rebind and do all that. But having a digital magazine, that gives you the flexibility of being able to do things like add videos, uh, add audio. Um, so it's uh, it, it's pretty flexible, and I, I there's a lot of great articles in there. And Carolyn being on the front, we put a, a picture of her on the uh, Facebook page, on the Fishing in Florida Facebook page, and uh, you'll see her there as well. I wish you well, my friend. God bless you. Be well. Stay healthy. And uh, looking forward to speaking with you in about a week. You guys have a great week. You too, Robert. I'll check in tomorrow. All righty. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest <laughs> impact on your child's <laughs> life. So take a moment to be a dad today. <laughs> Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Witt. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, Give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions. Don't text and drive. Visit stoptextstoprex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Project. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. 
Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561 792 Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning, and thank you for taking the time to listen in. Greatly appreciate it. A big thank you to our affiliates, uh, WCET, our home network, 101.7 out of Columbia. High Point Radio, 1690 out of uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and uh, New York. KYAH out of uh, Utah. And Marina. Marina Rock Radio is out of Miami. Thank you to all of our affiliates for carrying the show and helping us get the word out there. Greatly appreciate it. This morning I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks with me as my co-host. It's always a pleasure to have her with me. I I like to say if you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to my friend Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Carolyn. Well, yeah, absolutely, Rascala. And during the break, I went to my refrigerator to see if I had any leftover hot dogs or anything that's suitable for bait, and I found some. So I'm going to try and give it a shot, throw my uh, fishing rod off the dock here today and see if I can catch anything uh, catfish or something. (laughs) Cool, yeah. Um, Here's something you might want to try. Uh, Take the hot dogs, get your little hair hook, and see if you can catch some little ones, and then use the little ones to catch the big ones. You know, that's a good idea, too. I can probably cast a few sabiki rigs out uh, and see if I can get some little uh, some little pilchards or something right in the canal. But So so once you do catch them, uh, what are you going to do with them? Well, my next guests will, uh, will give you all kinds of ideas, and they have a, a really neat uh, website. It's called uh, fishmongerapproved.com. Um, all kinds of information uh, there about you know, we're stuck inside, so what is one of the most common things all of us are going to be doing? We're going to be cooking. So I've asked them to come back and share with me and you uh, some of the things that we could do while we're stuck at home. <laughs> we're stuck inside. Uh, boy, these two can cook up some awfully good, oh my gosh, Just ma- my mouth is watering as I'm thinking about it. So let me welcome them. It is Rachel and Margaret Covello. Good morning and welcome, ladies. Thank you for taking time to call in. Hey, good morning. Hey, this is Margaret. Um, Carolyn, you sound like you're fishing on a dock in the backyard. Yes. yes. Why don't you go ahead? Why don't you scrape them barnacles and use them for uh, catching sheephead and eat the hot dogs while you're, while you're fishing? <laughs> well, you, you, you know I have some barnacles on that boat lift, so I'm sure I can get them. And I have a scraper. There you go. Scrape the barnacles, and yeah, it's like chum, and then, you know, put a couple on a little um, hook, and uh, 
That's great sheep's head bait. I will definitely try that. Wow. I'll, uh, it, that reminds me of when I was uh, when I was young, and we'd go down. We have saltwater canals where I grew up, and we would go down with a fishing rod and a five-gallon bucket and, and some tackle, and that'd be it. We'd get down there, we'd bro- break open the oysters, and we'd have some hair hooks, and we'd catch some shiners, and then we'd use the shiners for the bait. and we catch just about anything you could catch in the bay, we catch uh, in our canals, whether it was a snapper, a grouper. Uh, we called them shad. I may be using the wrong name, but uh, these big, huge shiners, oh, my gosh. But just about anything that was out in the bay was in was in their canal. So that's kind of cool. You just go down just with the hardware, and then you make it work. You, you use your, your surroundings to make it work. It's a great idea. She can do more than cook, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what have you got to share with us? I mean, so many of us are, are stuck inside now, and one of the most common things that we're going to be doing is cooking. And if you're, yeah. if there's anybody out there that's like me, uh, I, I've run out of ideas. I ran out of ideas before any of this started. That was one of the, the reasons I enjoyed having you guys on. You gave me fresh ideas and uh, stuff that was really delicious. So I'm hoping that, uh, and I know more than likely, you will provide us with something this morning. I thought we would start with uh, the topic of oysters. Mm. Um, I don't, I, uh, mm. we've, we've been talking a lot about oysters on our, our website. There's been, you know, the, the shellfish industry in general, of course, through all of this, through the whole pandemic, shellfish has been hit hard a lot because when people are ordering food to cook at home or um, they're focused more on things like the, the snapper, the grouper, the, the seafood they're used to, shellfish, like uh, shrimp. Um, scallops or, you know, the things you would typically cook at home. I think oysters are one of those things that people tend to eat out. They Mm -hmm. tend to eat at a nice seafood restaurant, but it's not always something that they're bringing home because they can't shuck them properly. Um, So the oyster industry, of course, has been hit fairly hard during this because a lot of those, a lot of those suppliers and markets are not bringing in oysters anymore to sell because it's just not selling as quickly. So first off, we have an article on our, our fishmonger approved website right now called stimulus money to help oyster farmers in Florida. So when we talk about the stimulus money that just came out, the $2 trillion in stimulus money, there's actually 300 million of that earmarked for workers in the aquaculture industry, including oyster farmers um, to help that happen. But in addition to that, there are groups, and I don't know how much there are over on your side and you might know better on the, on the East coast. Again, we're on the West coast over in, St. Pete, Tampa, but we have groups up in the up in the Panhandle of Florida. There's a a, a group called um, Alligator. It's the, well, the group isn't called it's it's Oyster Boss, um, which sells Alligator Harbor oysters that are farmed in the Panhandle, and they are amazing, delicious oysters. But they have they they team up with a guy named Benny B, who actually helps travel those oysters all over the state of Florida, and they used to sell direct to the markets and the suppliers that would then sell to restaurants. But right now, because the restaurants of course are not selling the way they were used, you know, used to doing um, Benny B and his um, and Jeff Tilly, who owns the oyster boss company, they're actually selling direct to consumer right now. And you can get amazing deals on oysters um, right in your home. So instead of paying $85 for a bag of a hundred oysters, they're selling them right now at $55, which is a, which is a steal. Um, so we're we're kind of focused on oysters a lot on our website lately just because we're trying to help our, our buddies in the oyster industry. But we're also realizing there's such a good deal and you can definitely do things at home with them. So we also just partnered with um, uh, Chef David Benstock, who is the head chef, executive chef at Il Retorno in St. Petersburg. And we put a recipe on our website called Charred Oysters, Simplify Your Life. And it's an amazing twist on oysters. Um, if you get a chance to go there, but oysters, you can eat them raw, of course, but I'm not a raw oyster fan. Margaret, Margaret's more of an oyster, a raw oyster fan, but these are <laughs> delicious on the grill. Um, so oh, what he my. does is he adds, a, he adds a couple of little, um, Italian touches to the oysters. And again, that's all right on our website. It's one of the first recipes that pops up. So he puts that, he puts a couple of Italian touches. You can put them on the grill. You can, you know, roast them in the oven. You can even use a flame. He has a flame torch picture on the picture that he that he sent us. But they're so good, and I think people often overlook oysters as a, a like an elegant kind of thing to have at home and something that's really delicious and you can do a lot of things with. Many uh, many years ago, 
if you hear my kids, it was the days of the dinosaur. But many years ago, I was uh, in the Air Force, and I happened to, my last uh, permanent duty station was Panama City, Tyndall Air Base there in Panama City. I had never uh, even thought about eating one, <laughs> one of these things. I used them for bait all the time. They were, they were there on the saltwater canals down in Miami where I grew up. Uh, we called them something else, but it was basically the same thing. And um, the uh, young lady that I was dating at the time talked me in. <laughs> Talk me into doing that. So we ate them raw, and I became addicted to them. Um, at the time, I don't know if they still have them, but they had these places called raw, um, oyster bars. And you would go to this bar, and instead of serving you drinks, they would serve you oysters. And my soon-to-be brother-in-law took me to one of these places and sat down, and I watched this man eat three dozen oysters, raw oysters, one after another. After I was lucky if I could get six down. Three dozen of these things. Uh, and wow. we would buy a, a, a potato sack, a burlap sack full of these things, which I think is what you're talking about now, and take them to my soon-to-be father-in-law's house, and they would literally have a party. We would just sit there and shuck oysters, and, uh, and the oyster, the cracker, the hot sauce, the cocktail sauce, and, and that would go on for, oh my gosh, hours. We would just spend hours doing that. Uh, I never thought I would like them, but I actually fell in love with them. They're addictive, I think. You know, once you get a taste <laughs> for them, you basically, you know, you can't eat enough on the same oh, way. I mean, it's after hours of fun, too. You know, you just grab a six-pack and then and shuck away or yeah. um, throw them yeah. on the grill, you know. And that's that's another that, good way to do them. And just when they start to pop open, they're, they're ready right, to go. Right, right. That was one of the other ways that uh, I always had them raw, but uh, this was like semi-raw. It put them over a really low fire, but a lot of smoke. And uh, uh-huh. maybe just a couple of minutes, within five minutes, I would say, they would crack, we'd pull them off, we'd open them up, and they'd have that, that, that smoky aroma flavor to them. So it would just add to the, to the taste. It was really great. That's an excellent idea. So you can find that at fishmongerapproved.com. Um, what else you got to share with us? Um, we also did post, that, as I mentioned last time we were on the radio the other day, or last week, We are teaming up with chefs around Florida that specialize in seafood to help our home cooks, as well as to help promote these restaurants um, that, you know, are struggling to kind of keep things going while while people are not in restaurants right now. Um, One of the other recipes that we posted that was a guest recipe is a pan-seared hogfish with curry sweet potatoes and cauliflower by um, Chef Jeffrey Jew, who Mm. is another, he was actually, he's a celebrity chef out in, again, the West Coast. Um, we need people on the East Coast. So send some restaurant chefs our way so we can help feature them as well. But this one is simply delicious. He loves to cook hogfish. I think that's his favorite thing to cook. Um, but this one has lots of nice curry flavors. Um, so it's, and it's simple. These recipes that we're putting on our website right now are meant for the home cook. There's nothing crazy in them that you wouldn't recognize and if there is we fully explain what what these ingredients are how to order them where to order them many of the ingredients i know with the with the charred oysters um one of the recipes is that there's a type of pepper that he uses and let me look that up because honestly i'm blanking on it at the moment but we put a link in the website where you can actually order it right right on amazon or something that's really simple you don't even have to go over your house to get awesome um it's the uh calabrese Chili. So it's an Italian chili. They also make a Calabrese chili oil, a chili paste. So those are the types of little things and that that special touch that a lot of these chefs will use a little fancier words or ingredients. And it's my job to <laughs> to, to write it so that the home the home cook can can use it. Simplify but then, sometimes there's an alternative too, you know. And sometimes yeah. I'll see a pepper or some kind of a spice, and then there's an alternative that you know if you you you'd be surprised what you probably have in your pantry. Now's the time to go through it. You know, and start mm-hmm. using up some of the spices that you have. Well, one of the words that um, that the uh, El Retorno that Chef David Benstock used was um, guanciale. You guys know what? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> but guanciale is a it's a Italian cured meat product prepared from pork jowls or cheeks. So an American mm. could simply use bacon. Um, it's kind of a, another alternative for <laughs> there you it. Go. I um, love it. That one threw me off. I was like, what is this? So, but I did put a picture of it and you can order guanciale because it's a, it's a, um, 
kind of a dried meat product, you can order it right for Amazon, which I had no idea. So mm. you can either order that or you can just pick up a pack of bacon, whatever's easier. Um, and then and then lardens. I, I did learn a new word today. Lardens is when you take bacon and you slice it vertically. So you have these little thin strips that have like, you know, fat, meat, fat, meat. And they cook up and you kind of almost fry them in a way. And they get nice, crispy little bacon pieces. So that's apparently a very Italian type of thing to do. Um, so there's lots of things we're learning as well. The other thing, of course, I think, you know, it's Sunday. Um, Easter's coming up soon. We're all going to be at home. We want to make some of these little experiences fancier so we're, or more special just because we're stuck in a very difficult situation during the holidays. Um, so I, of course, think of brunch foods and some of those things that, you know, a lot of us enjoy going out to brunch on a Sunday or having a Sunday Easter brunch. Um, we have a really delicious stone crab. We've talked about this before, I think months ago, but I'm kind of bringing up some old recipes too people can use for brunch, but we have a stone crab and scallop quiche on our website, mm. which would be a perfect brunch mm. recipe. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, that, that one, and it's the picture so beautiful. Um, Margaret teamed up with a friend of ours. I call him Crabby Al because he's a, <laughs> a blue and stone crabber. Um, but they teamed up and they made, I came home one day and these beautiful quiches were sitting there and they took the stone crab claws with the meat still on them and they stuck, you know, once they had, had cracked the shell open and it was just the beautiful little black and orange tip left, they stuck them into this egg mixture with scallops and other crab meat and baked them oh and they're goodness. just gorgeous. Oh my God. Um, and then, yeah. And then the other brunch item that, um, I think it's a lot of fun, aside from, you know, your typical fish spread, which, of course, we have on our website. But there's another brunch item, a smoked salmon toast. You can make little, especially right now, too, we have Passover for anyone celebrating Passover this week. That starts tomorrow night or Tuesday night. Um, you can definitely substitute the bread for matzah if, if, you're, if you're eating matzah. But we have smoked salmon toast on our site. And then my other favorite brunch item is the grouper and waffles. So it's a twist on chicken and waffles, but you actually do fried grouper on top of waffles and an egg on top. And it's just, if, you, if you're if you not caring right now about where your cholesterol levels are, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing dish. Well, are you kind um, of, you're balancing it out. You're eating fish. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> and, yeah, and then the other brunch one I would say that works really well, of course, is the stoned and drunken shrimp and grits. Um, you know, shrimp and grits is a classic and it's perfect for like a brunch feel. And again, I think brunch is one of those meals every week where, especially in our area, I don't know, I'm sure the same in yours in Florida. Um, people love to go out to brunch around here. It's kind of that day to relax and unwind and enjoy a, a treat. Um, uh, Margaret always loves to get waffles on Sunday and she woke up this morning and she said, I, I want waffles. I said, well, I think you're going to have to go buy some to carry out because I don't think we have any flour in the house right now. <laughs> so, oh, my. Um, well, you know, yeah. th these are. this is one of the reasons I wanted uh, you two ladies to come on is to share with us because you guys have such a wide variety of um, things that you can do. Again, we're inside, and I think one of the most common things between everybody is that we're, we're going to be cooking. We're going to be fixing something to eat. You get tired of ordering mm -hmm. out, and that gets expensive after a while anyway. Um, yeah. And here is a, a wide variety of ideas that you can utilize. And um, you go to fishmongerapproved.com. You'll see what we've been talking about. Pictures are there. Recipes are there. Um, I think videos, too, right? Don't you have videos as well? Yeah, Margaret Margaret has some videos where we apparently, we've been putting so much attention into getting recipes on our website and some articles that... We haven't done as many videos lately, but um, she's going to get back in front of the camera. I think we're going to do – one of the things we don't have yet is to ha how to properly shuck an oyster, and I think we're going to do some tips like that. We also just – just because everyone's cooking at home, I want to just raise some awareness. There's so many more kitchen fires happening right now because people are cooking at home. We also do have an article on our site about fire safety tips wow. for the Excellent. kitchen and outdoor grill. So, yeah. you know, make sure you're paying attention to, to what you're, how you're cooking and – any fire safety issues because we don't want people's houses burning down where they're supposed to be in isolation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Taking care of themselves. Yeah, I cheat. I, I do a lot of barbecuing um, 
because I just yeah. I like the taste and <clears throat> I just like the barbecue. I like the whole thing about barbecuing. So I do a lot of cheating. I, I, I don't cook as much in, inside as I do outside. There are some things, of course, that I have to do inside, but and whatever I can. Well, then you need to check you know, out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, whenever I can, I just, you know, I cheat. I take it outside. Have a, I have a couple of grills. I have a small one for personal use, and then I have a big one for when the kids come over, when the whole family comes over. And I just, the, the yeah. little one uses a small amount of charcoal. I can get it fired up literally in 15 minutes. Cook, whatever I cook, I can cook usually within 20 minutes. I can cook whatever it is I need to cook, and I'm ready. It's on, it's on the plate ready to go. Um, I just like that taste. Nice. You need to check that if you're a grilled person, you need to check out our grilled everything red snapper. Ooh. Um, mm. It's so it's so good. It was made by a local chef um, over here called the Big Catch. Um, it's Salt Creek Chef Jason Gordon, another local. So we have a lot of celebrity chefs over here, so we've been getting them to do some recipes. But that one is phenomenal, and you can cook it all in one charcoal. You have a charcoal grill, for instance. You can cook everything right on that one grill at the same time. The vegetables, the the blanc that goes with it, as well as the fish. So Sweet. definitely a good recipe. And you can cook it as a whole fish or a, a filet. Wow. You, have, are you planning on doing any grilling there, Miss Carolyn? Well, um, I think I'm going to have to because I looked up the recipe and um, I could probably get uh, there's a nice even believe it or not Publix has a really nice fish fish department when they are, when they're stocked up and not that many people are buying fish these days which is strange uh, mm-hmm. I might go get a piece of it it's got some grilled looks like grilled cauliflower on it uh, looks delicious. yeah yeah that one's the snapper recipe with the grilled cauliflower it's, it's definitely one of the favorites um, so a good place and also make sure you know it's great to support groups like Publix I know Publix of course everyone's going there right now is you know especially with toilet paper and things like that but don't forget about those local seafood suppliers that depend on you know they're not selling the toilet paper and the the daily things that people need to buy you know Publix is making plenty of money right now so also make sure you get out there and you support places like this small seafood market that we that need our support to stay afloat right now absolutely um you know to do both of those like we like to support local of course we shop at Publix all the time too but i want to put some extra emphasis right now on getting out and supporting your your local seafood suppliers your local restaurants if you're not in the mood for cooking go out and support those seafood restaurants that have some great options right now um let's or buy gift cards you know to support them now so that they can stay afloat until when they open again Excellent ideas. Excellent. I like the idea that, that you are trying to help the uh, oyster industry. Uh, we had a similar situation here uh, in Lake Worth uh, on our side of the state, but it was with the um, vegetable growers. <clears throat> Since uh, a lot of their vegetables and their fruits were not selling uh, as fast as they could through the normal outlets, they decided to go directly to the consumer. So, you could pull into their parking lot, and I think it's 10 bucks. You get a box full of stuff. You get a whole box full of stuff. That yeah. probably would cost you twice that much if you had to get it at the store. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a way to help. You know, one of the most important things that we have are locally owned, family owned businesses. It, it, it is the backbone of our country if you, if, when you get down to it all, because it's, it's the people like us, the small, Locally owned, family owned businesses, we're the ones who pay the taxes. We're not the multi-billion dollar companies that have a hundred, I'm exaggerating, a hundred um, lawyers that can figure out how we can go and make $11 billion like one of them did and not pay a penny in tax. Uh, so it's the little guys like us that really keep things going. And many times, many times you will find that the locally family owned business gives back to the community mm-hmm. on a local level. Um, and that's that's really important. Uh, many of these people give back. Carolyn gives back. Uh, we give back. Uh, um, a lot of these people that I bring on that are locally owned, they're constantly giving back. They're within the fishing community. They give back to the community. So this, so it's an investment. It's not so much that you're just buying from a local uh, family-owned company. You're investing with them. And that's how I look at it. When people do business with me, they're investing with me and, and it will be treated like a family instead of when you're dealing with a big 
company, call AT&T or Comcast or one of them guys when you have a problem and see how long it's going to take you to get it resolved. And then call a little company, a small company. God forbid something goes wrong with your, your order. and f- Watch how fast that gets resolved. There's a big difference between the two. Yeah. Big difference. So I'm glad that's, that you guys are on the same level. Especially right you know. now. Those little companies want to stay in business during this time. So We're fighting desperately. There's going to be, before all yeah. of this is over, hundreds of thousands of small businesses that are in critical condition. They're going to need all the mm-hmm. ICU they can get. And uh, these little things that you're mentioning help tremendously. Every little bit helps mm-hmm. at this point. And yeah. us, us helping each other, that's really what America is to me. Us helping each other. Whenever you have the opportunity to help somebody, you help. Uh, and that's really, you know, what we're talking about here. We're talking about helping each other at, at a time when we really do need each other's help right now. Yep, I absolutely agree. Well, I have to even tell you that um, some of the restaurants, we don't, we're don't we not lucky enough to have fish markets over here in the Pompano Deerfield area that I've ever discovered. But some of the restaurants were uh, oceanfront restaurants, Oceanic and the Beach House. You girls know where those are. They were doing for yes. twenty dollars. You get an appetizer, an entree, and a wow. dessert. And wow. then now, as I had a cobia with a Brussels sprout oh beans gosh. and uh, conch uh, soup and uh, a b- a banana upside down pineapple cake. Um, and you know they bring it right to you. And and I almost, I tipped them more than what the cost of the dinner was. Wow. You know. So yeah, that- and a lot of restaurants too are doing these uh, family meal carryouts or even like produce carryouts. So restaurants that specialize a lot in things, lots of vegetables. If, you know, if the vegetables are going bad in there because they're not having enough patrons come in, they're, they're doing these group sales where, where restaurants directly are selling produce in bulk or a whole family meal. And you can get some amazing deals. I know in Tampa, they, there's a group um, called local seafood and turtle um, foods and they're selling, they usually ship all their stuff mostly up they, they sell a lot of seafood of course i'm sorry they they sell seafood to local restaurants like the top restaurants around our region they're selling direct to consumer right now and you can get incredible deals on seafood packs on our instagram page we just posted a, an image of their sales right now and i think the gold pack is a ton of high-end seafood or high-end meat that you can get at like rock bottom prices for a, a whole set of, of proteins so, although Margaret is banned from buying any more protein, I just opened the freezer today <laughs> to, to look for flour. I would we kind of keep our so we don't use flour and sugar a lot in this house, so we keep it in our freezer just to keep it fresh. And I opened the freezer and I'm like, we have enough meat and protein in this house to last us through like three pandemics. So, <laughs> if you can't find any on the shelves, it's not because we were hoarding it all at once. I think she's just collected it over a a, a year or two. <laughs> But if I, if, I if, I'm not, local. if I'm not mistaken, though, a lot of the stuff that you get doesn't come from the store, right? A lot of the lot we of the do fish, a lot. A lot um, of, the fish we, a lot of our meats and stuff. We yeah. also have local markets. Yeah. Like we have a Italian yeah. market here, like Mazzaro's. So that's a little different. Get the meat from, and yeah. yeah, we love to support local. That we do go to, we do go to Publix too a lot because we have two Publixes literally within a mile of us. My. Yeah. So what do you think you're going to do for this next week? What, what what do you got coming up with regards to uh, recipes planned for this coming week? Um, we trying to, we have a couple more recipes that are coming in from some local chefs. And um, we're going to also try to get Benny B to drop off some oysters so we can mm. stuff a few. Um, at least do some videos of, of sucking oysters. What do you guys want recipes for? What What do you think? What and we have a we have a shrimp recipe coming up. Margaret just made a kind of a simple shrimp scampi yesterday. We also have a burger recipe going up. It's actually a burger where I top we topped it with stone crab meat and the, the oh stone gosh. crab mustard. Wow! That is in some capers. It was really pretty and and delicious. Um, what else do you you what do you, what do you want? What do you want, Rascala? What do you, what do you need to learn how to? Cook? Oh my gosh! You know, here's the thing with me. I my my imagination is is like gone. It's that's why I, truly this is one of the reasons I enjoy having you on because you open things up. There was one thing that you brought up to my attention one time. I never thought of it. Blueberry some blueberry hot sauce or something. I, I thought, oh my god. Yeah. I never thought oh, about. Oh, don't it, you know. don't ask don't ask him about that. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> They said, they, you asked me the other day where the recipe was, and 
we she doesn't publish that one although I, i'm trying to convince her at some point to bottle it and sell it oh um but my. You, i mean you can use any hot sauces but, but i mean I'll, the, I'll, I'll get her to bottle it soon the, the point i'm making is i never ever thought of that and and this is why i enjoy yeah. having you guys you have that imagination of taking different things and putting them together and coming up with something really awesome uh, so when you ask me what what I would like, I would like more of you guys to come on and give me more ideas. That's you know, and maybe maybe that's a, a lazy person's way out, but that's really the honest the truth is I just don't have that imagination. Uh, when it comes yeah. to other things, I do, but you know it, it, that's part of life. Each of us has a part of the puzzle. Each of us is we find that we're good at one particular thing more than any. We're good at a lot of things, but one thing that we kind of focus in on. And so when we have someone like you who brings fresh ideas, for somebody like me, the fresh ideas, things that, you know, like I said earlier, things I would never have thought of. And then I looked at the website a couple of times, and there's pictures, and, and um, there's recipes. And, and it's, for me, it, the easiest thing, I can, I can follow directions. So if you can tell me, okay, if you do A, B, C, D, I can do A, B, C, D and come up with a really nice um, a dinner or a, maybe a, a brunch or something like that. I, most of mine are dinners. Uh, but that's what I enjoy. I enjoy that imagination, someone else bringing it to me and saying, okay, well, here's you can do this, this, or this. So my answer to you is just more you guys with more <laughs> with more ideas. <laughs> And Margaret, I, and I hate to tell you this, Carolyn, but we Margaret made a a carrot hot sauce that's amazing. I've been using oh it probably gosh. on everything the last couple of weeks. I don't think she's sharing that one either. She keeps a couple of her recipes to herself. But last time I shared it, I actually was bottling hot sauces. I had it through a, a distributor. He bottled it, and then he stole my recipe. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm at a hot sauce um, uh, event. And he had one of my hot sauces, but it was a different label on it. So, you know, that's why I'm a little careful with sharing some yeah. of Yeah, it's, it's sad that there's people yeah, there's that do, do stuff like that. You're, you're lucky that she shared her white white smoked, uh, smoked white fish recipe. Her fish bread recipe was like a, it literally paid, I think, for the boat that's sitting out in our, in our, our little parking area. And that one has been shared online. Um, so that's, that's about all the, the secret recipes you're getting. <laughs> That's fine, and I'll tell you what, if you ever want to come up with a, a pasta dish, that would be great, because my problem is, even though I'm home, I'm still working full-time, so I still don't have time to cook dinner. So it's always nice to be able to cook something and still have a little bit of it left for the next day, and pasta and those kind of dishes usually reheat well the next day, so come up with a pasta one in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we have one on our, we have a Spanish mussel, I think it's a Spanish mussel and shrimp pasta dish. Um, that's already on the we website. Margaret and I just made. I'm I'm actually not eating um, flour right now, gluten, because it it bothers my stomach a little bit. So last night she made a shrimp, like a kind of a very simple shrimp scampi recipe, and then we served it over um, this edamame pasta. But you could use regular pasta too. This was just an alternative for me, uh, and it was surprisingly good. I've had like bean pastas before that taste like rubber. Um, this one actually was a little lighter and, and fluffier, um, but you could easily just put regular, regular pasta. Oh, perfect. Mm. Yeah, but we'll do, I want to do something with a, uh, like a fusilli pasta or a penne pasta, something that's a little bit different. I feel like we keep going toward the, the new, the, you know, the regular traditional spaghetti or angel hair, and I'd love to do something a little different. Mm. I could just well, pop my mom's traditional tuna casserole on the oh, site. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm being, I need to do a grown-up version of that with fresh tuna. <laughs> oh my gosh, smoked tuna casserole! Been banned from our website. Mm. Wow, there is a reason why I do this show once a week. If, if, with all the food you guys are talking about, oh my goodness, I'd have to be on a diet for the rest of my life, Jiminy. Oh my, <laughs> my mouth starts to water when you guys talk about some of this stuff. I can't help it. It's just I think about how good it would taste. Wow. Well, we are. <clears throat> this is what happens when we're having a good time. We are out of time. But before we go, I want to give you guys a, an opportunity to um, get out your website and uh, your your social uh, your social networking contacts. And uh, then I'll mm -hmm. let Carolyn uh, say goodbye, and we'll go to a break. Thank you, guys. I greatly appreciate it. Really, really, really do. Thank you. Yeah, you can. So you can visit fishmongerapproved.com for recipes, articles, news, um, and some videos, and then. 
check out our Instagram pages. What we've been doing on Instagram is sharing a lot of content from other pages, restaurants, seafood markets around the state. Um, if you hashtag fishmonger approved or Florida seafood, we will reshare some of the content to get your brand out there, to get your pictures out there. Um, and then, of course, on Facebook, fishmonger approved and Twitter. So we're all over social media. You can find us. It's not too hard. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely, girls. Be safe. Looking forward to the next recipes. Thank you. The Fishing in Florida show with your host, Stella Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Sure. Full of special moments. A girl? Right. Unexpected moments. I got this. moments okay dad thank you <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids even the smallest moments can make the biggest impact on your child's life so take a moment to be a dad today <laughs> thinking of moving before you do anything else call diane Whitting. she provides a concierge service things like having your home or condo packed and shipped even take care of your home repairs or upgrades Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Project. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561-792-9600. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. The shark, I'm fishing in Florida, where the sun shines all day. Just call me a group of shark, fishing in Florida, oh yeah, fishing in Florida. 
Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. Good morning to you. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. If you have missed part of the show, you don't have to worry about it. We will have archives set up. And you can find those archives on our Facebook page, a link to the archives on our Facebook page, and that is Fishing in Florida. Go there and you will see a link for the uh, all the archives, which are actually on YouTube, but if you try Fishing in Florida on YouTube, good luck. <laughs> it just doesn't come up. Um, but you can access it through our Facebook page. So once again, while you're there, give us a like. It makes us relevant in the searches. Fishing in Florida, an honor and a privilege to have you listen in this morning. Thank you so very much. A big thank you to WCETFM 101.7 out of Columbia. A big thank you to uh, High Point Radio, 1690 AM out of New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. A big thank you to KYAH 540 out of Utah. And a big thank you to Marina Rock Radio out of Miami. They are also a tune-in station. So if you have the tune-in app, you go to Marina Rock Radio, you can find us that way as well. You can listen to us from Facebook, uh, click on Contact Us. You can listen to us on our home network, which is WCET. If you go to www.wcetfm.com. And the easiest of all the ways, which is coming up very shortly here, I think probably in the next week or two, we will have an application, a very, very simple app that you download, will not have commercials on it, will not have push notifications, won't have any of that stuff. Just a simple app that you download, and when you want to listen to anything on our network, on the WCET network, you just... Click on the listen, and you'll uh, listen to whatever particular show is happening at that time, whatever time that might be. The network does have shows 24-7, so uh, once we get that in gear, that'll be the easiest of all the ways to listen to the show. Just download it on your phone, and uh, whenever you're ready to listen, just click on listen. This morning, I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks uh, with me. Uh, She is uh, always a pleasure to have her on. Uh, I like to tell people if you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to my friend Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Oh, absolutely, Riscala. Uh, and also now we have my my next guest is uh, David Villegas. I hope I ha- I'm saying that right. Uh, and David is with um, BoatTracks.com. I found out about David from Carolyn. So let me let Carolyn introduce David, and then we'll let David come on. Sure, absolutely. So as you know, I'm in the boat tracking and asset tracking business. So every once in a while, I do a search word to see uh, what else is out there and make sure I'm relevant. And I found uh, David that does an incredible uh, job at actually tracking systems on boats. So that would be fuel and engine hours and um, some uh, engine temperature, voltages, speed, things that I'm always asked about uh, through my clients that I I have not been able to offer. And I'm going to work with David moving forward as a partnership so that we can really do full rounded tracking of all boat systems. So, David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Glad to be here. So, David, tell yeah, so, us, uh, now, Carolyn said a little bit about what you do. Can you give us a little more detail about what, uh, why would I want you? Let me let me ask you that. Why would I want you perfect. to do whatever it is that you do? Thank you. So, that's a great question and one that we love to answer. So, our system, basically, what it does, it, it records everything that's going on on your boat with all the systems that are on board. Uh, so, the best benefit we've seen for our clients is they're able to understand uh, their systems and how their boat is performing better. That way they can make smarter decisions that in the long run is going to save them money when it comes to making maintenance choices, uh, as well as the security aspect of being able to know when your bilge pumps have been running and how long have they been running, as well as your battery life, uh, especially when you keep your boat in the water. Um, those systems, you want them to make sure that they're operating at all times. And we know most of us don't have the luxury of going out to the boat every day because we have to have busy lives with work. Uh, so we provide that peace of mind for our clients uh, that they're able to kind of keep a watchful eye uh, on their boat without ha- actually having to be in the marina or on the boat themselves. So so this is a kind of sort of like what Carolyn has in a way. It's wireless. It comes on your phone or, or how does that it, work? It comes on your phone. It comes in your phone, so you install, basically what we do is we install a device on your boat's network, uh, and that device has a, basically works like a cellular phone, uh, like a cellular phone as well. It transmits uh, to, your, to our cloud system, which later transmits to your phone. 
So you can have both on your phone, the real time information on what's going on in your boat, as well as the historical data of every trip you took, which comes into play with what Kevin was saying about having like, let's say you took out your boat yesterday, you can know exactly how much fuel you, you, you consume on that day, uh, how your engines were running, what temperatures they were running at, uh, how your alternators were doing, how your batteries were doing, your wow. pressure, your oil pressures, uh, basically everything that's going on uh, with the engines as well as with other systems connected to, to our device. Wow. Okay. So, so what happens, Rascala, a lot of times when people are, are uh, you know, live in a different state and we have a lot of rain, which we do in Florida, if their batteries, and a, a perfect situation someone told me about who was an avid boater, his dad took his boat out, he left the, the bilge in the on position, ran the batteries out, lots of rain in South Florida, and the boat sank at the dock. Well, here's a here's a perfect example of something that could be used wow. to to indicate oh, but somebody has to go take a look at the at the boat because the batteries are dead. Wow, I never thought about that. <clears throat> that uh, your boat could literally sink at the dock because you're you drove your battery down by running your bilge, leaving your bilge on on manual and running running the battery out. Um, so all of these things that you're able to to monitor. Uh, is this done through uh, software, some kind of software that you install on, on, on the boat? Or maybe a combination of software and hardware? So it's a combination of both software and hardware. Uh, we install, what we do is basically the, the most boats nowadays, uh, on newer boats, they come standard with a, with a system called NEMA 2000. Uh, in which we tap into and we pull all the information that's coming there. Now, new boats, basically all your engine information, GPS, is basically it's all wired into there. So it's a very mm. easy installation for the hardware. On older models, there is uh, basically gateways that we use to transfer all the data into that NEMA 2000 so we can pull it. And then from there, basically, uh, that device connects to, to our cloud system in which the software aspect of it kind of takes place, uh, in which we... Uh, interpret the data, uh, sort of like so we can give you accurate uh, gas consumptions and do the alarm system and stuff like that. And then you have the software, wow. the software aspect doing all that, as well as in your your mobile app or your desktop version, so you can so you can take take a look at what's actually going on. Um, so it's great for for like like uh, Carolyn was saying, if you leave your 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 ba your switch on uh, for the bilge to know that that bilge has been running for how long that's been running. We do all of that on the software aspect, but we analyze like, hey, your bilge pump has been running for 20 minutes. You know, that long of a bilge pump running, you know, something's wrong. So you should hmm. head over to your boat or if you live in a different state, call your marina so they can wow. go out and inspect it. Wow. And what's really, uh, really exciting too is the app that they have, Riscala, is you can actually log on to the app and almost see the gauges that you have on your boat. So you can see if you have three engines like we do, engine one, the RPM, the temperature, the voltage, engine two, engine three, you can see how much fuel you burned. And why is that important? Well, because we have issues with fuel now and, and are, are they allowed to deliver to your house or not? Or do we have, how much more, how many more days of fuel do we have before we have to start trying to find fuel because they're not selling fuel? Right. So a lot of really cool information about it. And, even, and think about fleet management too. Um, how many hours was that boat run at a rental place? Do they yeah. need to bring it in and do any maintenance on the engine? So just a lot more details that make make for for me anyways a full rounded boat every boat system tracking company as I continue to add products to my Atlas mm -hmm. tracks as well. Yeah, I can see how the two of you would complement each other greatly. Um, you with the ability to provide security uh, if, if that vehicle or, or whatever it is, whether it's even an iceberg, I still get a kick out of that. If it moves, you within ten feet of anywhere on the planet, you can find it. And then uh, David, with his data, uh, kind of a backup. I, I would love to have been able to have that when I had my my boat years ago, to be able to know exactly how much fuel I used, to be able to look at a, 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 a map and say, okay, well, I know I was there for this amount of time. I traveled from there to there at X amount of miles per hour or, or knots. Um, just a, a really a ton of valuable information if you know how to use it. That's the whole thing. Uh, if you know how to use it, it can be tremendously valuable to you. You go out and um, you go do some fishing somewhere and you have an atlas tracks and you hit a really good spot. Well, you can go back to your atlas tracks and say, oh, it was it was right here and right here. 
and you can go right back to that spot within, you know, roughly within about 10 feet. You can go right back to that spot again and, you know, do it again. So I'm, I'm all for it. I, I'm a techni- technician, if you want to call it that. I'm an electronic technician, so I love technology. But I also know that we're saturated. That's why I, I like the, the fishing aspect. We go out there and we go do some fishing and get away. We have the technology around us, but we enjoy what, uh, what God has given us. Um, but it's important to be able to have, to maintain what you have. And I, I, this is almost like um, what David described is almost, I'm, I'm trying to think of what they call it. They have a port on cars where you can plug in to the car's computer. So this is kind of like that. The OB2 port. Yeah, that's it. I couldn't think of what it was. So this is like that. Is that what that, what you plug into? Correct. So basically, it, it's similar to that, but in the marine industry, there's a, there's another standard, which is the NEMA 2000 standard uh, that we're working on nowadays. And going back to what you said about being out there and fishing, so everyone here is uh, in our company is an avid boater, and we all love boating. And we understand that when we just want to like when we decide we're going out on the boat, we just want to stress free, connect with nature, go have our right, barbecue right. or boat fishing or whatever other activity we're doing. Uh, but there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes. Exactly. We try to streamline and make sure that when you go to the boat, you're going to be able to turn that key and head out. You're not going to be seeing any unforeseen problems, which all of us boaters have suffered through. Uh, and that comes with the power of data and being able to have that data basically uh, in your pocket. Yeah, have a pleasant and, and- pleasant surprise of going, turning the key and finding the batteries dead. Right. Well, I and okay. I can even say I can even say at one time I've run out of gas when I had a 28 Mako, and at one time I ran out of uh, engine oil right at the Boca Inlet when the current was the worst it could be, mm. and that only allowed me to have so many RPM to get through that uh, through that inlet, and uh, I never ran out of gas or oil again. And this mm-hmm. would have been a system that I could have looked and said, okay, I only have. So would have never happened. Left. Yeah, would have never happened. That's great. I'm, that, I think it's awesome that uh, people can, are able to do that. Now, the, the website, if I'm not mistaken, is Boat Tracks, and it's B-O-A-T-R-A-X dot com. Is that correct, Dave? Correct. That is correct. BoatTracks.com. You can find more information there. Um, are you, give, can you give us an idea? How long does it take you to do this, to set this up? If, if you are dealing with one of the newer engines that has one of these ports, how long does it take you to get this set up? So if you're dealing with a with a new boat that's fully integrated with NEMA 2000, uh, it should take you no more than 10 to 20 minutes. Wow, that's great. And is it something that you come out and do, or is it something that the 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 owner can do? So normally, it's something that the owner can do if it's completely on NEMA 2000 and they have uh, somewhat of a familiar familiarity with with the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, Obviously, we, we are, we're based out of Miami, Florida. If there's anyone local and they, they, they need our help, we're more than willing to help. Mm-hmm. But normally, we, we set up partnerships with installers and, and companies that are actually the ones that go out and do the service if, if, if the customer needs a professional installer doing it. Mm-hmm. We always recommend, uh, if you have no idea, to get someone uh, to do it for you. Uh, just because the the beast of the nature is you don't want to be going into where you're, all your 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 technologies on the boat and being disconnecting and connecting cables if you have no idea what you're doing. So we always try to recommend uh, to have a professional installer doing it uh, if you're not familiar with with NEMA 2000. On on a on a difficulty level for somebody who is uh, who's familiar with electricity and wiring and things of that nature, uh, one being uh, the least difficult and 10 being the most difficult, where would you find if a consumer wanted to try to do this and they had a little bit of, of knowledge, do you think that they could do this? Where would you put it between one and 10? I would put it at a, at a two, to be honest with you. It, okay. is, it is a simple plug and play system. Yeah. Uh, yep. Just so to give a little more, more detail on it, uh, on both of our NEMA 2000 ready, there's a NEMA 2000 backbone, which basically looks, there's a bunch of T's and cables coming in. All the cables look the same. Uh, all you would have to do is add another T to that, uh, to that network and plug in our device, and you, you would be done. Wow. That's what I was kind of alluding to, because it sounded like something with the, with the newer vehicles, uh, the newer vessels, I should say. Uh, it doesn't didn't sound like something that was extremely complicated, so... 
don't uh, let that deter you from having a system like this if you think it's really complicated. Um, it sounds like it's relatively straightforward. Do you provide... It, it is, do and we provide instructions on how to do it. Uh, we also provide, a, if, if it gets too complicated and you want our help, we could do, uh, with today's technology, we could try to help you with FaceTime or, or with pictures, and we could tell you where it is. But to be all honest, on newer vessels, uh, it takes us longer to find out where to place the unit that actually wire it. <laughs> and by placing, I mean finding the space. Yeah, physical, <laughs> yeah, physical to, spot for it. Yeah. it <laughs> yeah. wow. And Risk Gallo, what's really uh, nice about this product and why I, I wanted to, to reach out to David was the hardware is only about $350. It's a one-time fee. Um, they do subscriptions, of course, like Atlas Tracks. They've got a, a monthly fee of just a seasonal plan, which I think is great for people that are only using the boats at certain times of the year. And, you know, an annual, annual plan that's less than $200. So you get all wow. that information. And I can tell you from personal experience, we're out there with a notepad figuring out how many gallons we just burned because we have three tanks. Yeah. We've even taken sticks and put them in the tanks to see if we can figure out how much fuel we have in our tanks. Mm. So, so th this seems a very simple solution for very low cost. Wow. I like the idea that uh, you have access to all of this data when you need it because it can be quite, it can be quite useful um, when, uh, when it's, again, when you know how to use it, it can be extremely useful, very helpful. Uh, in, in some cases, might even save you a, a big headache. I know for me, uh, one of the things that I used to do, uh, this of course was many, many years ago before we had all this technology, one of the things I would do is the, the night before, we would typically leave at, at 4 or 5 in the morning, so the night before I would go out and crank the boat up, I'd hook the hose to it and crank the boat up, make, make sure everything's working, and then disconnect everything and uh, get up the next morning and go. Uh, and I had done that this particular night, and everything was fine. Didn't seem to have any problem. I ran the boat for about four or five minutes and shut everything off. And the next morning, we drove from my home, which was in Cutler Ridge, down to Isla Morada, which was a good hour and a half from where I was. Got down, put the boat in the water, went to turn the key. It was dead. Something had happened in between the time I'd shut the uh, boat off and, and the next time I went to turn it back on. There was a slow short of some sort somewhere. And and we had gone all, gotten all the way down there, and now it was it was probably six o'clock in the morning at that point. There wasn't anybody around that could give me a jump, and I was very fearful of going out <clears throat> because my battery was dead. I didn't want to get out there and then have my battery die on me. So it was really a big headache, a, a very disappointing headache. And I could see with something like this, it would have never even happened. I would have been told long before the battery was dead, "Hey, listen, you got a problem. Uh, you know, go take a look." So I, I can see where this could really save people a lot of lot of a lot of trouble. Correct. And the other point I want to make to something you said about uh, having all this data. And some people, some people don't. Our, our our only pushback, honestly, has been like I don't know what to do with all this data. Uh, so we have a system basically where you can connect with your service providers. So basically, you can have them watching over it because there's a lot of new boaters. The lifestyle calls a lot of attention. You want to buy a boat. You've experienced it, but you're not very technical. You haven't gotten into the engines part. It takes a lot of work to get to know a boat and how it works. And some people honestly don't have the time, but they like to go out boating on the weekends. We are a perfect system for them as well because you can connect with service providers and dealers in a way that they're looking out for you. And they can look at all that data and say, like, hey, uh, this might be going on or this might happen in the future. Why don't you bring it in for service so we can take care of that? So next weekend when you want to go out, your boat is ready to go. Excellent. That's a great, great feature, David. Yep. Excellent. Well, David, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Again, if you want more information about what David's got, you can go to BoatTracks.com, and it's B-O-A-T-R-A-X.com, www.BoatTracks.com. David Villegas, I hope I'm saying that right. Is it Villegas? You're saying it perfectly. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time to call in. I wish you well, and uh, we'll have you back on with an update at some time here in the future. God bless. Likewise. Go ahead, Carolyn. Good Sunday, Dave. Have a good Sunday, Dave. Tight lines if you get you out there too. fishing. Hopefully. <laughs> You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Full of special moments. A right. Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. 
Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest <laughs> impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. <laughs> Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Project. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561 792 9600. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. Oh, I grab a fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing and falling on. When the sun shines all day. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning. If you're just joining us, have no fear. We will have an archive set up here on the uh, Fishing in Florida Show on Facebook. You go to Facebook, find Fishing in Florida. Give us a like while you're there makes us relevant in the searches 
and uh, you'll see a link to the uh, to the archive to the show. This morning I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks with me. I you know I, I like to say if if you want to protect what you have to the max, you got to call my friend Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. So welcome back, Carolyn. Good morning, Riscala again. And uh, you know, sadly, we haven't been able to do what we love to do as much as we would like to. Uh, haven't been able to get out. I haven't been able to get out in, in, in three weeks now, and I'm going stir crazy. Um, but uh, hopefully, here we'll be able to sneak out and you know, just canals and stuff. Maybe I'll go do some of that. Uh, I'll take one of the grandkids with me. I'll go just fishing in, in the canals. They, we have a park that literally is within walking distance of me, but they have decided to close all the parks down. Uh, that's usually where I take the kids. But a couple of canals here and there, we might be able to go there and do that and get it out of uh, get it out of my system because I really want to go fishing bad. Anyway, my next guest, my next guest is Mike Lindell. Mike is uh, with the King of the Glades tournaments, uh, and he is somebody that uh, primarily fishes freshwater, if I'm not mistaken, or brackish water, if you want to call it that. And uh, he's taking the time to call in this morning. And we're going to get a report from him. How you doing, my friend? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Michael. Uh, it's Kind of, kind of strange uh, with this uh, virus going around. All the uh, tournaments have been shut down. Uh, I postponed the King Series till later in the year. Um, most of the boat ramps have been shut down. Uh, they shut down the saltwater ramps first, and then all the jet skiers started going out in the Everglades partying, and so they decided to shut the ramps down out there. And <laughs> there's still a couple open, but we're keeping them top secret, you know, yeah. in hopes that, yeah. uh, you know, everybody doesn't crowd together. Yeah, I'm laughing because earlier in the broadcast I said, you know, all the stuff that, I, this is how I feel now, all the stuff that I got away with as a kid, I, you know, I didn't get grounded for. I'm grounded for now. You know, you were saying how the jet skiers were out there, and they didn't like that, so they shut that down. It's like you can't have any fun. <laughs> yeah, or or Riscala. You have to look at it this way, too. If you really want to do anything naughty and get yourself in trouble, now's the time to do it also. <laughs> and that's right, true. <laughs> right. I, I do have a couple of friends that are testing the waters. Uh, the water levels out in the Everglades and on Okeechobee are, are getting – Lake Okeechobee is at like 12 foot now, so it's getting on borderline low. But the Everglades is the lowest it's been in three years, and fishing is amazing out in the Everglades. So wow. even if you can't get out there in a boat, you can go out there on shore from shore and you know cast a big topwater or a big worm or something and have a shot at some good bass. Uh, right now I've been kind of luckily – you know, I'm fortunate enough to have a lake behind my house, so i kind of been self-quarantined at my house and fishing behind my house. But mm. – uh, you know that that's pretty much really all there is is just you know you know just go out and uh, you know fish these local canals and lakes and you know put on some uh, stick worms or some top water and you know have fun and you know get away from the house for a little yeah. bit. You know, yeah, got to get out for a little bit. Water in Florida. Get know? out and enjoy the sunshine. Uh, that's part of if again if you want to build your immune system up. You got to do away with the stress, and the other thing is, if you get out and enjoy the sunshine, believe it or not, it's actually good for you. you, you the sunshine yeah. uh, will provide your body with vitamin D, and vitamin D is an immune booster. Uh, so, enjoying that sunshine is, is is a lot more than just feeling the warmth and enjoying that. It's uh, actually helping your body. Um, for somebody who's not really a, a freshwater person, um, what if if they were to use a lure of some sort? What would you suggest? What would be I know sometimes you tell me some of the stuff that you use, it sounds like you're using a snake almost. These things are like 10, 10, 10, 12 inches long? Uh, Actually, Rascala, I hand-poured probably about 116-inch snakes because the bite was just starting to kick off, and they're sitting in my garage on the the dry board because, uh, you know, there's nowhere to go, you know, but... uh, you know, yeah, they're hitting the, I mean, if I, if I had no clue, you know, if I'm a saltwater guy and they got everything shut down and I just need to get out of my house, mm-hmm. I would, you know, put on a stick worm, uh, either a gambler ace or a bruiser baits, uh, big stick or something. It's the easiest bait. You just, you know, Texas rig it with a hook on, on some light line, throw it out and let it sink. And usually the bass will eat it on the way down. There's not a lot of work you have to do with a stick worm and, uh, you'll catch a variety of sizes of fish on it. Now, I wonder if they consider, I'm not trying to be smart, I wonder if they consider tackle stores essential. Um, there are um, some tackle shops that are open. Um, BJ's Bait and Tackle in Plantation, I believe, is still open. Um, a lot of guys are buying online, but a lot of us anglers who are 
you know, self-isolating and still going out fishing. We're kind of, you know, putting the online orders to the side and going to the local bait and tackle shops that are still open. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're protecting themselves. They're wearing gloves, masks, whatever, when you go in the, yeah. and they're still, you know, hand sanitizer, stuff like that, because we got to keep them open. There's already been a couple bait and tackles that they just couldn't stay open no more. So, I mean, that's my fear. Yeah. No, that's my fear you through know? all of this. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of small businesses that are not going to be able to survive this. Oh, and yeah, it's devastating. No it, it is devastating. Uh, I'm a small business owner, and it's devastating my business. It's just uh, really, really hard. And it's heartwarming when, when I hear about other people reaching out and saying, you know, think about this small business before you do with a big business. Because that's something, long before this ever happened, that's something that, I, and you've been on the show with me, you know, that's something that I've supported for the longest time. Always have supported the small business over the big business. And now more than ever, we need to do that. And when it's, it's, you have a choice to make between a small, especially if it's a family locally owned business, between a small business and a large business, I'm hoping and praying that people will, will choose the first uh, whenever possible. You uh, and, and I would say the majority of the time you will not be You'll not be sorry for doing that. Those people appreciate the customers. They, it becomes part of the family almost, and you'll see a big difference. Uh, you may have to pay they, a couple they, of pennies uh, more, but it's worth it. Go ahead. Yeah, they, they actually they actually had a tournament on Okeechobee, which you know I didn't go. I chose not to go to. It was on the north side of Okeechobee. They had 34 boats. Uh, took like 24 pounds to win. Everybody kind of like you know self isolated in line. They didn't form a big group. Uh, you know, so there, there is a couple boat ramps. It seems like, seems like the boat ramp shutdown started South, like in Miami and, uh, <clears throat> exactly. County and, yep. and it's slowly, slowly creeping its way North. Uh, I know that there's some boat ramps up in Seminole, you know, up by Lake Seminole stuff that started to close down. Uh, but basically there's still a, a quite a few ramps up North, you know, in Orlando and by Lake Placid and, you know, Central Florida and North Florida that are still open, but you can see it, you know, the shutdowns creeping north slowly. So hopefully, hopefully everybody's right with their projections and stuff. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a rough, really rough couple weeks here, you know, because so many people are infected in the United States with this stuff that there's going to be some serious death over the next couple of weeks, which is unfortunate. And, um, you know, hopefully we just make it through the apex and, uh, and like, they, you know, the curve goes down in June and, you mm -hmm. know, and they mm -hmm. come out with a vaccine and, you know, so, you know, we can get back to normal life. I mean, uh, you know, the, unfortunately, and I'm not a political guy, I'm not, you know, big on Democrats or Republicans, but at some point, I think, unfortunately, Trump's kind of right. We have to start getting back to some kind of normality. Yeah. And uh, this is not you know, because this is not good for us. are going to get wiped out. It's not good for us. It's not good emotionally. We're we're social beings. We're, you know, it's we're we're closed up. This is kind of like uh, those poor people who get caught up in the snowstorms and, and they're locked in their houses for like a week. They can't even go out of the house for God's sake. I can somewhat understand and feel for them now, um, but that's what this is like. And for the whole, for almost the whole, not the whole planet, but a lot of the countries, we're not the only ones going through this. There's other countries going through this as well. So it's very, it's not good for us not to be able to socialize. Um, so this is really hard hit. Uh, the sooner we can get over this, the better. And if that requires taking some safety measures like um, the social distancing that they continue to speak of, staying at home, I look at it as, and, and it's difficult for me to say this, but it's the truth. I look at it as I don't have any control over this. You know, and for a man, that's difficult. And men, the way that we're wired, we want to have some degree of control over our lives. And to have to admit that we have absolutely no control over what's going on is scary in a way. It's worrisome. Um, but you have, yeah, I also and, have faith that things yeah, will work and, out. Yeah, I, I just hope when this blows over that everybody, you know, supports the local businesses and, uh, yeah. you know, try to try to get these small businesses back online. I know uh, Roland Martin shut down yesterday for 30 days. And, you know, so, you know, what that wow. pretty much means for the staff, you know, the their hotel was, up, you know, nobody's nobody's booking rooms. Nobody's. Well, they can't. You know, they can't. They, they, they can't. There's, yeah. there's nothing you can do. You know, these small businesses, you know, if we don't flood back to them after this is over, is really going to put a put a hamper on, on you know, the just it's crazy you know yeah. and yeah. my my train of thought is you know uh before i go <clears throat> you know like i said i'm not very political or anything but 
I noticed an article in the paper where China banned certain wildlife from being, you know, farmed out into poorer provinces and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's where, you know, if this wasn't man-made, if this was really animal to human, uh, they really need to, this is like the fourth virus out of China in the last six years, you know, and I, and I don't blame the people of China, you know, there, there's billions of people, they got to eat something, but they, they really need to, to go over their, you know, farming practices and, you know, see what wildlife they're really eating and, and ban the stuff that can, you know, possibly send another one our way in another couple of years. Well, I think that we're, it's clear that they, that they have a problem with their people over there, with, with hum, human rights over there, and we're very free with them. They've always been, up until the last, up until this administration, they were always considered a, uh, something partner. I can't think of the right word. A preferred partner. I, I can't. I don't know if that's yep. the right word. But there was something like that, and I never could understand that. So you got a point. Uh, and you know they've sent us stuff. I laugh because I would cry if I don't laugh. They sent us stuff that has really harmed us uh, uh, over the years. Um, uh, chicken strips that that the dogs have died from. Uh, pet food that they made. The dogs have died from. Uh, drywall that people had to move out of their houses because it, they couldn't stand the, what was coming out of them. Uh, just a wide variety of things that have come from there that haven't been very good. Uh, so it, it, I'm glad that we're at a point now where it's it's become in the, into the spotlight where they need to be held a little more responsible for some of their actions. They're one of the largest polluters on uh, on the planet, but yet uh, we get a lot of the blame for that. And uh, we're not anywhere close to what they do. So it is a good point. It's, it's, it's about time that, uh, you know, we start looking at uh, opening our eyes and looking around and see what's going on. Um, I hope that, and pray that we never, ever, ever have to, anyone of our kids have to go through this again. This is, this is sad what we're going through today because I, I truly believe this was deliberate. That's just my personal yeah. opinion. I believe this was done deliberately. Um, and it could have been avoided, completely avoided. And I'm not putting the blame on anybody here in the United States. I'm putting the blame on where it originated. I think that because of the way things are over there, um, they, from what I understand, the original doctor that tried to blow the whistle disappeared. And it's, that's the kind of thing that, you know, uh, worries people. Nobody wants to say what's going on because they're worried about something happening to them. Um, so anyway, it is what it, we have to deal with it now. So like I yeah, said. Uh, for, yeah, for, unfortunately, you know, I mean, but, you know, getting back here, you know, to the situation here, if uh, you feel trapped at your house, if you got, you know, your kids or whatever, you could. Grab a fishing rod, go to the, you know, go to a canal, canal or, yeah. or lake or, yeah. you know, something that's open. Give yourself, a, you know, five, you know, six feet between the you and your kids and let them cast a rod. Yeah. And, you know, they have a shot at catching some fish and getting away from uh, this scary reality that we're in right now. So, yeah, it is. It is. And yeah. turn the TV on. Well, you know, I said this last <laughs> week, um, the rods are perfect at six feet, six, seven feet. So, you know, if you if you could smack someone next to you, you're too <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, just a just a word to all the young people that think they're bulletproof from this. Uh, quit quit traveling north to the open boat ramps. <laughs> you're, you're shutting mm. us all down. You're shutting us all down. But uh, now, well, you know, I you know we're strong. America's strong. We'll make it through this. Uh, you know, of course, big pharmaceutical will probably make some money off of the vaccine and stuff. But hey, you know, whatever it takes to get us back running, and uh, you know. Uh, all we can do is keep our fingers crossed that, uh, you, know, you know, a lot of people are going to die. And, and that's, uh, it's a real shame, you know, it's sad. And, it's sad. you know, so, another thing, another thing I remember back in the eighties and 90, early nineties, buy American, buy American, it might yeah. cost a couple dollars more, but yeah. buy American and nobody did. So you all remember the companies that. went overseas yeah. and, you know, it, I there mean, was look a, what happened. There was you a know, time medical supply chain was overseas. Yeah, there was a, there was a time when there were advertisements on television, and the advertisements said, "Look for the label," and what was the label? Yeah. Made in USA. That was look for the label, made in USA, uh, and you don't ever see any of that anymore. But that's something that we need to get back to, and more oh, yeah. now yeah. more than ever, we need to uh, get look for the USA and deal with the locally owned, fa particularly uh, family owned company i i really believe you will be satisfied that you'll be happy that you did um because and once this settles down i'll tell you I, I will promise you promise you this clorox wipes and uh you know <laughs> for, you know for the face mask and all that stuff when this comes down i'll be stocked up to, for a year supply in my closet <laughs> because i have a feeling that this ain't going to be the last oh, one and, sad. And, you know yeah 
You know, yeah. hopefully we learned our lesson as far as, uh, you know, where all our medical supplies are because we, we had, and I'm not blaming Trump or the, you know, the previous administration or whatever, but our stockpile was junk. It was yeah. garbage. Yeah. In a lot of areas and, we were uh, depleted. A lot of people yeah. died because we didn't have what we needed. That's, that's uh, sadly true. All right, my friend. Well, I wish you an awesome day. I'm going to let Carolyn say goodbye and then we're going to uh, go to a break. Thank you for taking the time to call in, Mike. No problem. Thank you for having me and uh, stay safe and uh, God bless. And, you know, we'll make it through this and there'll be some good days of fishing ahead. Mike, um, hopefully you get some good fish in your lake. Uh, share some pictures on our Facebook page. All right, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> You're listening to but, uh, the fishing in Florida yeah, show. Yeah, well, my Your lake, my lake has dropped seven. about four and a half feet, so the fish are like we'll out in the right middle. Back. But we'll get them there. But you guys have fun. Uh, take your kids out fishing. You go out fishing, and you guys go out fishing, and just uh, try to ease your mind, get through this stuff. All right, here we go. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. <laughs> Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, Give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's Sunshine State, broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show, Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the final segment of the show. Thank you so much for taking time to, to uh, tune in and allowing us to share with you um, all the goodies that we have. Uh, all, I'm thinking of some of those recipes that we talked about earlier. <laughs> I can't get that out of my mind. Uh, but it's uh, it's nice to have some of these guests on, especially people like um, uh, Margaret and Rachel, who have uh, uh, an avid um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, <clears throat> imagination when it comes to uh, coming up with dishes. Who would have ever thought of blueberry hot sauce? I think it was <laughs> something like that. Anyway, this morning I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. Uh, for that one, uh, she's with me this morning as a co-host. Good morning, Carolyn, and welcome back. Good morning, Rascala. Uh, you were mentioning the girls. I actually reached out to them for the, one of the recipes over the week, and they said, no way, no how. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, my. Well, you know, uh, another one of my most favorite people is Angelia. She's also known as the Florida Salty Cowgirl. She's down here in the Keys, and uh, she's also gracious to call in on Sunday mornings and give us the updates about what's going on down in the Keys. Welcome, Miss Angelia. Thank you for taking time to call in, my dear. Good morning, everybody. My pleasure to be here. Hi, Angelia. How you doing, Carolyn? Good, good. Can't wait to hear what's going on down in the Keys. I know you've got one way, one road in, one road out. One road in, one road out. Uh, anybody who's thinking about traveling down here, please don't, unless you are a resident and have a local driver's license or, or a home here, because they are turning people around at the stretch and uh, 
they're turning so many cars around. It's just crazy that people are still trying to get in. Mm. <laughs> but I had an interesting uh, adventure this week. I My accountant is down in Key West, and I'm up in Isla Mirada. So I ran the whole US one all the way down to Key West to visit my accountant. I needed to get out of the house big time and uh, needed to get my taxes done. But I was also very, very curious to see what it looked like all the way down through the Keys. And believe it or not, through Isla Mirada, the heart of Isla Mirada, it still really doesn't look a whole lot different except for all the hotels and restaurants closed up and your gift shops closed up. And then down in Marathon, it doesn't look a whole lot different either. Um, Still a little bit of traffic. And in Key West, people were everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) I'm everywhere. And uh, they have have most of your little um, beachy areas along US-1 along the causeways and things, they have most of them coned off. One little section they did not have coned off, and I bet you there was 30 people out on the edge of the water. Holy it's smoke. Just, uh, yeah. Um, it's really interesting that, that people are still just out riding their bikes, walking with their families, and I guess, you know, we don't have a whole lot of land to move around here, uh, so I understand because I've got a little cabin fever myself. But it was really interesting. It, it, mm. it doesn't look that much different. The traffic's much lighter. And, of course, you know, like I said, the hotels and the restaurants being closed up and the gift shops is kind of strange. But the locals are moving around and doing <laughs> the what they do, the, I guess. The, lo- <laughs> the locals have a unique uh, a unique mentality uh, down I, there, I, in, 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 especially in Key West. Yeah, it's definitely a different mindset down yeah, here, and we yeah. were the last ones to get hit with it, so we're still kind of in disbelief. And when you live down here and somebody tells you stay in your home, <laughs> it doesn't feel right at all. You lost but, your mind. <laughs> yeah, the weather's been absolutely perfect, you guys. We have a whole another week of absolutely perfect weather. Now, on a on a fishing report, uh, I personally have not been offshore. Uh, your boat ramps and your marinas, for the most part, are closed down here. Everyone who's lucky enough to have their boat in the water behind their house is still out fishing, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, social distancing at its best, I say. True. <laughs> so, uh, but the fishing is still really good. Uh, there's a lot of African pompano coming in. Uh, there's a lot of uh, all kinds of reef fish coming in. Uh, you're, it's still a few wahoo coming in. And believe it or not, I'm still seeing people bringing in little mahi. I mean, they wow. just never stopped. All winter, they never stopped. This wow. should be coming in right now for spring. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, they never stopped coming in. They're still coming in. Wow. Uh, another interesting thing I had mentioned before is uh, the bonefish on the flats back here in the back country, uh, they were almost just non-existent for a few years. They worked really hard to get the bonefish fishery back up and healthy. And I had mentioned earlier in the year that the the flats were just so covered with bonefish. It was just insane how they came back so nice. And they're still catching bonefish on the Atlantic side, bottom fishing. Holy smokes. That's a to me. Yes. Yes. Wow. That's how many bonefish are down here now. Uh, after almost losing them, uh, I couldn't believe we get into a whole bunch of bonefish bottom fishing out on the reef so that was really interesting to me so the fishing's still really good if you can get out on the water guys <laughs> <laughs> if you get the means man it's been perfect weather perfect conditions and the fishing's still been really really good uh hmm. unfortunately nobody who's not down here can get down here <laughs> so yeah it's a really interesting uh, situation in the whole world i'm sure but it, it's just like you said people have a different mindset down here and stay in your home is not why people live down here yeah, they're, so, they're uh it, it, they're known to you know, be it's, it's some somebody we really even haven't mentioned is all these uh all these folks that are out uh, bait fishing and make their their livelihood from dropping off bait at the marinas i can only imagine what they're going through all these tournaments in pompano were all canceled, oh yeah you know, where wow. they're, they're used to this for business i didn't Absolutely. even think of that wow Absolutely. The, the the number of people that are out of work down here is just insane. Um, I think that's why there's so many people kind of out and about on their bikes and walking and, and, and enjoying themselves outside because everyone's out of work. It, yeah. If you live down yeah. here, nine times out of ten, you work in the fishing or the tourist industry or both. Yeah. And, uh, you, Carolyn, you made a very good point. Your bait and tackle shops, for the most part, are closed. Uh, the bait mm. fishing guys 
losing, you know, massive money. I'm losing massive money. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, most of your boats, I, I don't uh. see any of the of the sport fishing boats going out. Uh, all of the captains I know that I talk to, nobody's really going out. Uh, there's no tourists, and that's what we survive on. So without tourists, it trickles down all the way to the guys, like you said, Carolyn, who commercial fish for bait. Uh, it, it, even, you know, even our, our commercial fishermen down here usually dump off at the fish markets and the restaurants down here. So they're all, all out of work, too. It's it's an interesting situation. It'll be uh, even more interesting as this month goes by. <laughs> hmm. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Day drinking is sort of the uh, the activity down here these days. <laughs> 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 I keep teasing that everyone's going to have Keys disease by the end of the month. <laughs> oh my! Oh lord! Well, you know, I I read an article where they said just in the last week alone, um, uh, alcohol sales have have gone up fifty five percent just in the last week alone. So people have yeah. got to do something while they're they're stuck inside. Um, I, I had asked Carolyn earlier uh, if she had, because I do, I walk every day. So I'm out there in the neighborhood every morning I walk uh, because I have an active dog and I can't, and a lot of times I, I'm out of the house out doing service calls, so I'm not here with him. So I literally try to wear him out physically before I leave the house, as well as myself sometimes. Uh, so I'm out there walking and I have seen a lot of people, a lot more than I normally see out there, either biking, riding their bikes, uh, families with their kids, with little ones, little like uh, six, seven-year-olds, walking with their kids, riding the tricycles, uh, you know, just a lot more activity outside now than I have seen before. And uh, you kind of alluded that, to that as well. But I think the people down in the Keys, particularly down in Key West, um, they're somewhat nonconformists. <laughs> they don't really go They don't really go along with, with uh, everything else. They have their own way of doing things down there. So it doesn't surprise me that there's a lot of them out in the street and stuff like that. And the police are actually uh, actively walking around and and uh, since all of the city parks and the state parks are closed and people don't realize a lot of things down in Key West, like Mallory Square, where everybody gathers to watch the sunset usually, that is a city park. And um, people were complaining online about cops kicking them out of the park when there was nobody really around. Well, the parks are closed, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> You can't really put a gate on a park, you know, that doesn't isn't fenced, you know. But the parks are closed. The parks are closed. So, yep. um, but yeah, it's, it's there's a lot of policemen out, but you know, you can't stop everybody who's a resident there from getting out and getting some fresh air and taking a bike ride. And uh, you got to get out and do something a little bit. And as long as you're, like you said, walking the neighborhood or riding your bike, I don't yeah. see a lot wrong with. It. Yeah. I think that's pretty healthy. I, I I have some people who uh, when I walk my dog. Uh, they will literally, if I, I walk my dog on the sidewalk, I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy. I don't walk along the street. I never ha have understood why people walk along the street when there's a, a sidewalk right there for you to walk. Anyway, so I walk on the sidewalk. And I have people walking along the sidewalk coming the opposite direction. They'll walk away from me, all, I mean, all the way out to the street and back around again because they're concerned about the social distancing thing. So you can get out there and you can you can enjoy the sunshine, which is really nice. Uh and uh, let it build up your immune system. Don't you don't have to be inside the whole time. Even like my neighbor across the street, they pulled up a couple of lawn chairs and uh, decided to just sit out there and enjoy the sun. So there's simple things. You know, we can do some simple things. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is, we have time and we can share it with the loved ones that we have. And I think that's the best thing we can do right now. Absolutely, absolutely. And do get outside. It's, I think it's very, very unhealthy to be cooped up inside the house yeah. all day long. Yeah. Absolutely get out in your yard or get out in your neighborhood a little bit. And Rascala, I do the same thing. I bike through my neighborhood every morning, and I do the same thing. I steer completely around 15 foot away from any walkers or any other bike riders and uh, maintain that social distancing. So, yeah. But I think imperative that everybody get outside <laughs> it is it really is the the sun hitting your body creates vitamin d within your body the vitamin d is an immune booster uh it's better than any vaccine that you can take um and there's plenty of doctors who who, who will tell you that if they want to tell you the truth they'll tell you that uh, vitamin d is one of the strongest immune boosters you can get get out there and get a little sunshine enjoy it absolutely i've had time and i'll on my tell day. you i think I think they're going to find a whole bunch of people are a lot more healthy after this as well. Yeah, either that or fat. <laughs> either that or fat. 
I'm getting really a little over. bit of both for all cooking, <laughs> but it go out, you know. Or I'm just oh, all Lord. you think about all day long is the next meal you're going to cook, you know. <laughs> oh my but goodness! But I make it a point every day to get outside and lay in the sun for about an hour, and I'm so brown right now. <laughs> mm. Wow. Well, so, we are Dave, we are rapidly running out of time. Before we go, uh, Angela, real quickly, people want to reach you. How do they do that? So when all this is over, you can take them out fishing. Absolutely. Uh, FloridaSaltyCowgirl.com uh, on social media, Florida Salty Cowgirl on Instagram or Facebook. And you can always reach me at 813-610-0078. And All I right. can't wait for this to be over so I can take everyone fishing. Hot dog. I love it. All right, Carolyn, i give you an opportunity to say goodbye, and we're out of here. Thank you, people, for listening. Greatly appreciate it. Wish you well. Be healthy. Don't panic. Stay well. And uh, we'll be back in a week. Go ahead, Carolyn. Angelia, have a great week, and send uh, keep uh, adding up your, your, your pictures on Facebook. Can't wait to see them. You got it, girl. <laughs> so long, everybody. God bless.